Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today is the reveal of the new scooter. It's a little trusty little GP125 that if you're subscribed to the channel you'll be well aware of. There's a few videos of that. But today we'll build a new one. So before I had the GP125 I had the Vespa GTS 250 and we went everywhere and now we used it to a bit of island. Uh, brilliant by Bud's power, brilliant tool. I saw that, and got this. Um, now, it's tried to kill me once. It's broke down a couple of times, but I've sorted all that now and it's pretty reliable. However, my partner been on the back once and refuses to do it anymore. I think um, hell freezing over and on my dead body with the words used. And says she would go for a little ride. So I'd like to buy another one. Two choices. GTS 300. Superb bike, plenty of storage space. Uh, had one before, so I know all about them. No reason there. Or Royal Alloy GP 300. Next to no storage space. Uses the Vespa engine, so it's pretty good. Uh, but it looks far better. It's definitely a replica of the old GP125. So, toss and turned to the figures, uh, decided the G GTS, GTS 300 HPE is the best bike. But, I've gone for GP300, and there she is. Right, so, they look very similar. But obviously, there's just a few differences. The first one is the Royal Ally is far bigger. It's wider, it's got a higher seat height, and it's a little bit longer, I would say. Mm, but definitely a lot wider um, especially on the back you can definitely see so we'll have a look at that the old GP 125 is really really thin compared to the new GP 300 and if we come across actually the seat height see that it's not that much bigger but certainly feels a lot bigger when you're sitting on it I'll show you that in a moment yeah so if you look at the front pretty low really the handlebars are quite low so they are a lot lower than the GP300 obviously the brakes on the GP300 are far superior Single disc with APS, ABS, sorry. We've got a cable for a drum on the GP125. And on the back, again, we've got a disc brake. And on the old GP125, the old drum brake rod operated. Um, so, definitely the Royal has got more power, it's got better brakes. Suspension as well is probably a little bit better. Uh, but look at the size of that seat when compared to this little seat. If we sit on them, first on the GP125, handlebars feel low, both feet easily panted on the ground. Not a problem at all. It actually feels quite sporty compared to the Royal Alloy, which I'll show you now. So, I think mean, because it's a wider seat, your legs are spread out quite a bit more. Um, Sit in an L position. On the balls, my feet, not tippy toes, not tippy toes, but 
can't put both heels, both feet in front of the floor. The handlebars feel a little high up as well. So it feels more of a two room bike than, than the GP, but still very comfortable. Obviously, it's the main brakes and all the uh, good ones that you require. Some people say it's hard to put on off the stand, but that's dead easy, really, wasn't the problem. Right, so another difference is the sound. Now you cannot beat the sound of an old two stroke. Much better light though. So what other difference have we got then? Big glove box. A little glove box. And it is small. You know, it, it's titchy. Um, we mentioned the brakes. This I've put indicators on it. This obviously has quite modern indicators. Lovely. Got electric start. Post the old kickstarts. Um, the lights are far brighter on the GP. Put on this back and stand. The seat, this is the beauty of this one. It's on suckers. They just suck to the network. Petrol cap. Stick it down. As opposed to this one. <laughs> but yeah, not much space on this side, really. not much storage space. Um, panels come off dead easy on these. It's just a little clip under there. Panels take forever to come off these. Three nuts and bolts. One of the mods I'm going to be doing too soon is to rectify that. Um, flick out. Pillion wrists. The mirrors. These mirrors are shocking. They're absolutely shocking. So I've ordered some new ones and I've ordered some bar end mirrors. Um, see which I prefer. I normally prefer the big mirrors like I've got on the on the Lamy. Much prefer them, nice big mirrors. Uh, but we'll see. But yeah. What else? Suspension obviously. Pretty well adjustable. There's nothing on the old GP125. Twin forks on the front. Uh, liquid cold, and there's the radiator, which I'm a bit concerned about because it's quite low. It's quite low. And uh, must be put the storage chips. Now, the previous owner has put an extra big mud flap on there, but that might restrict the airflow a little bit. So we'll have to see about that. Nice centre stand. Mm, decent centre stand. <laughs> Carburetor, choke and fuel tap. This little beauty however, is totally fuel injectors. Nothing to worry about there. So dashboard, we've got speedometer, which doesn't work. Um, my little rev counter. And a little trip computer when they say the ignition on, nothing happens. But while I like when they say the ignition on, don't know if you can tell that, but the cause there's loads of things happening. Well, indicators are still on. Uh, it tells you your fuel tank level, temperature, revs across the top, mileage 56.3. Now, got it when it was three miles. So, petrol gauge on the left. As opposed to the old Lamy petrol gauge, which is that. 
throw some there. All the mud cans. All the mud cans. So, that's the two really, side by side. And do the indicators work? I think I'm going to they do work. Yeah. There's a little indicator work in there. GP300, what that like? Hmm, indicators don't look that bright to me, but there's no audible, so I'm gonna have to change that, put a little buzzer in the system. And again, if you subscribe, you'll see a lot of new videos coming out on this bike, because I've got a lot to do with it. It's already got the little screen on, like I say, I'm changing the mirrors, I'm changing the fittings from this, I've got a chrome cover coming for that, I might get some crash bars. Leg shield bars, and maybe one of these for the front. I have these chrome stick on strips that the previous owner put on. Um, but yeah, so like I said, when I bought this, it had two miles on the clock. Uh, the previous owner bought the brand new, had a bit of an accident, couldn't ride it, kept it in his garage for a year. That popped down, actually, it was a 400 mile. 500 mile round trip to pick it up. I've now got 50 mile on it, running it in. And the running in procedure is ridiculous. I was a sticker saying run in for the first 100 mile at 16 mile an hour. Well, I'm telling you that ain't gonna happen. However, I found another manual which says uh, just half throttle, up to half throttle for the first 100 mile, and two thirds for a little bit more, then get it serviced. So I've been up to about 40 mile an hour on it, and I'm varying the speed up and down, uh, which helps the engine bed in better. Give it a run, let it cool down, bring the revs right down, and then just back up again. Goes up to 40, nice and easily. I think it's well capable of the um, 80 mile an hour, which people say it can do in the real world. So that's it really. Little, little GP 125, it's titchy, it just feels so small compared to the new Royal Alloy. It's definitely a lot thinner. With the seat being so thin, you can pretty feel it going dead easy. That one, the seat's too wide, well, it's not too wide, but it means you've got to spread your legs out, you can't put your feet totally flat the floor. No problem for me. But for anybody who's short, anyone less than less than five, six, I imagine we'll struggle a bit, we'll be tipped to us. And look very smooth. This, after the initial problems, and I've set the carburetor up and the spark plugs and put all the units and everything on, it's running really good. Once it's warmed up, it's super, the <laughs> radius, it'll do 55 flat out. And uh, I've got one of those videos on my channel. Have a look at that, I've got not a, well, I'm going to say not a 60s, not a 60s. About 30, not 50 speeds at times. Once that's run in, I'll do the same. So, yeah. So, the mods I'm planning on doing, basically, there's some bigger mirrors, got some buy ins coming as well. See if I'm not really kept a fan of buy in mirrors, but we'll see what they like. Like shields, possibly a mud guard, uh, chrome surrounds. Be crash bars, chrome tail light cover, possibly chrome battery cover case, hybrid tubing in there. Um, when I first bought it, the frame colours were burgundy and ivory. Um, this is the ivory and the burgundy colour around here, one then set on the horn cast. On the body, I was going to paint it that, that colour, that colour scheme. Actually, I quite like the, um, the cream and the black, the ivory and the black. Because I've had two paint that burgundy, these have to change. That's going to change the burgundy as well. And then we'll be able to get them. So I think I'm going to keep it the ivory colour. And just accessorise with the, uh, the chrome. And then the, uh, the exhaust, I think. 
Can we be more careful with a better exhaust? Change this rainbow flap because it's not very cool. Too much going on in the back there for me. Look at all the two scooters in the gear edge now. GP125 Lamy and the Royal Alloy GP300. And there's only plenty of videos coming on this, but if there's anything specific you want to ask me about or see, just pop in the comments below and we'll see what we can do about that. And um, but for now, we we'll start hodging the parts, get this baby run in, and we'll do some real world figure speed runs, acceleration runs, GPS configured, see what it's really like on the road. And compared to the little GP125, that'll be funny. So I'm looking forward to putting my touch on this and giving it a bit more character, a bit more so. And at that point, uh, see you next video. See you soon. Keep it there.